Today I'd like to talk about the bagel problem. Let's suppose that we are going to buy a dozen bagels, 12 bagels, and we go into the store and there are several kinds. There might be plain bagels and poppy bagels and sesame bagels and onion bagels and everything bagels, potato bagels. There might be even blueberry bagels. And the question is how many ways for a given number of kinds of bagels can we purchase a bag full of 12 bagels? Let's say that I want to buy a dozen bagels and there are four kinds, plain, poppy, sesame, and onion. I might buy three of each kind and that would make the dozen. But it's possible that I really like poppy, so I might buy five poppy and then I would buy fewer of the other kinds. There's every possible combination. For example, I could just buy all onion and none of the others. I can buy 11 and one, I can buy, you know, eight and one and one and one and one, whatever <laughs> works out to be 12. So I have total freedom, and if I'm picking and choosing, the order in which I choose things does not matter. It's not like I'm going to say, you know, which bagel am I going to choose first? It doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is the total outcome at the end of the game. You have to buy 12 bagels, and you're not required to buy at least one of any of the kinds. You can really just buy, ignore one of the kinds or ignore all but one of the kinds. So the store will not run out. They have deep bins. Even if you're buying four dozen or 10 dozen, they will keep supplying you with the bagels you need. How many different combinations of bagels can I get in a bag? Okay, well, I think what we should really do is we should focus on numerical examples and see what the point is. And then at the end, we'll have some formula. So think about a dozen bagels. Bagels. Some people might think a baker's dozen is 13, but let's say 12 bagels. And we might, to start, vary the numbers of kinds. Like suppose we go into a store that just sells traditional plain bagels. How many different ways can we buy 12 bagels? The answer is just one way. We might go into a slightly more interesting store that has two kinds of bagels, plain bagels and chocolate bagels. And then how many ways can we buy the 12 bagels? So now the answer is more interesting. We can buy zero plain bagels. We could buy one plain bagel. We could buy two plain bagels we can go all the way up to 12 plain bagels. And then of course the other bagels, the bagels that are chocolate, would just fill in so that altogether we get 12. How many ways are there to buy the 12 bagels when there are two kinds? And the answer is given by this range of possibilities. And actually there are 13 choices. If I look at all the numbers from zero to 12 inclusive, 13. When there are two kinds, Namely, it's the number of bagels you're buying plus one. That'll be the answer. Now, let's say there are going to be three kinds. Blueberry, let's have bubble gum. Bubble gum bagel. <laughs> That's going to be tough. The third bagel will be caramel. And then the number of blueberry bagels that we buy can be anything from zero up to 12. And then the number of bagels left for the other two kinds will go from 12 down to zero. Now, we already saw that if we're buying a dozen bagels and there are two kinds, the number of ways of doing that is 13. If I'm buying 11 bagels and there are two kinds, the number of ways of doing that is 12. And if I'm buying zero bagels and there are two kinds, the number of ways of doing that is one. And so the total number of ways of buying these three kinds of bagels when you're buying a dozen bagels will be the sum of all the numbers from 13 down to one. And that number is the sum of the first 13 positive integers. And there's a formula. If I have the sum of the first n positive integers, that formula is given by n times n plus one over two. So in particular, here the n is equal to 13. So the number of ways of buying bagels when there are three kinds will be 13 times 14 divided by two. If we were thinking about a general formula, we might think of that 13 as 12 plus one and the 14 as 12 plus two. So it's a number like that. It's a fraction that involves a product of two numbers and then you divide by two. We could do this forever. So for example, if there are four kinds, then we might say that we have maybe onion and the onions would go from zero up to 12. And then whenever we have a number of onions, we would therefore have 
and number remaining for the other three kinds. So if we have zero onions, there will be 12 remaining for the other three kinds. And if we go all the way up to 12 onions, there will be zero remaining. And we saw that if there are 12 bagels to be purchased, the number of ways of buying three kinds is 13 times 14 divided by two. And if there are 11 bagels, there should be 12 times 13 divided by two. And we can keep going in this way. If we have zero bagels, the number is gonna be one. And at least in this formalism, well, I have to take zero and add one to it, and zero and add two to it, and divide by two. So that's also going to be one. So I'll have a sum of numbers like this. You might think that there would be some way of evaluating that sum, but the answer is not obvious until you try to do some kind of uh, analysis of the formula. And in fact, what is really needed here is some other perspective, some other way of doing the problem. Let's say we're doing four kinds. So the first kind that I wrote down was onion. The next kind might be blueberry. The next kind might be bubblegum. And the final kind will be caramel. We have our 12 bagels, so I'm just writing 12 stars. So far, these bagels are unassigned in terms of their flavor. So, so far we have these 12 bagels, and I've just written them with asterisk, known in the trade as stars. And I have to decide which of these stars will be onion, which of the stars will be blueberry, which will be bubblegum, and which will be caramel. And the way I will do that is to place dividers between the kinds. So let's say that I want to have only one caramel, so I will put a divider separating off the caramel from the rest of the bagels. And then there's bubblegum. That's a little sketchy. Maybe I'll take two bubblegums. So I'll put a divider here, and then the bubblegum range from the first divider that I'm writing all the way to the right to the second divider. Let's say I really like blueberry, and I'll take four of them. So I'll write the blueberry bagels here, and that leaves one, two, three, four, five bagels for the onion category. So what have I done? Well, I've written in a line a certain number of symbols. How many symbols? Well, there were 12 symbols for the bagels to start. And then in order to separate out the four kinds, I needed three dividers. That's a really key point, that the number of dividers is one less than the number of kinds. And altogether, I've written 15 symbols and these 15 symbols, 12 are stars, and the remaining symbols are called bars. So what I have are stars and bars. I have summarized my choice of kinds of bagels, onion, blueberry, bubblegum, and caramel, by writing down the bars that are interspersed among the stars. And the key point to this whole analysis is that I can put the stars and the bars in any order I want, and for each order that gives me a choice of how my bag will be constituted. And in order to figure out where the bars go relative to the stars, what I have to do is I have to contemplate some tableau that is completely blank, it's devoid of symbols, where altogether there are gonna be 15 symbols, and every one of these slots is capable of housing a star or a bar. And the rule, when I make my final decision, is that of these 15 slots, 12 of them have to be stars, and three of them have to be bars. So Professor, when you fill out your stars and bars on this, Basically, if you have zero of any flavor, it just means you'll have consecutive bars in that list. That's right, except for example, suppose I want no onion right whatsoever. Then I would start with a bar, and to the left of the bar, there is no onion, there's nothing. And then to the right of the bar, there will be 12 slots for bagels and two more slots for bars. So what we've done is we've related this bagel problem to another kind of problem. It's a problem where there are 15 slots total, three of the slots are bars, and 12 of the slots are stars. And we just have to decide which are which. 
So this is a standard combinatorial problem. There's a very simple formula involving factorials. So let's say that I want to analyze this problem. I want to make the choice. So what I'll do is I'll say there are 15 slots to begin with, and I have to figure out where the bars go. So let's say I'm going to place my first bar somewhere. There are 15 possibilities for that first bar. So I write the 15, 15 choices. Once I have placed down the first bar, there will be 14 remaining choices for the second bar. So I'll multiply by 14. And then there will be 13 choices for the third bar. And I seem to have this product as the number of ways of making my choices. However, that's not completely correct because when I put down these bars, these bars all have equal status. It's not like there's a first bar, a second bar, or a third bar. Even though we do have an orientation, there's left to right. When I say I'm going to put down my first bar, I could have put down this bar, this bar, or this bar. And so I have to divide by a factor that shows you the number of ways of permuting around the three bars. And the number of ways of doing that is there are three bars. I get three choices to say which one was going to be the first, and then two choices remaining to see which will be the second. And then there's only one choice for the third bar. So that's removed the problem of ordering. That removes the problem of ordering. And so what we have here for four kinds is we have um, to go back to the previous situation where we were looking at one kind and two kinds and three kinds. We have 13, which is 12 plus 1. We have 14, which is 12 plus 2. And we have 15, which is 12 plus 3. And then we divide by 1 times 2 times 3. Now that's another way to summarize what we have here. And if you are familiar with the notation of combinations or binomial coefficients, this product divided by the denominator product is written 15 choose 3. And 15 choose 3 has a standard notation that identifies what it is. It's the product of all the, the first 15 positive integers, that's called 15 factorial, divided by the product of the first three positive integers, that's 3 factorial, and then divided by the factorial of 15 minus 3, that'll be 12 factorial. And in fact, you can see that this is another way of writing what I've already written, because if I take 15 factorial and divide by 12 factorial, I am taking the product of the first 15 integers and removing the product of the first 12 integers, and what's left are the integers from 13 to 15, 13 times 14 times 15. So 15 factorial divided by 12 factorial is the same product that we have in the numerator, and the 3 factorial is 3 times 2 times 1, which also appears. And what's interesting about this formula is that there's a symmetry. It's symmetric between the number of bars and the number of stars, and that makes perfect sense because when I'm choosing the bagel kinds, I can say, well, I'm going to choose the places where the bars go down, where the dividers go down, but symmetrically, I can choose the places where the bagels go down, leaving three remaining slots for the bars. To generalize it, if you had had to buy 20 bagels and there were six flavors, Okay, so if there are 20 bagels, that means 20 stars. And if there are six flavors, that means there are five bars. And the answer then would be that I take the total number of slots, which will be 20 plus 5, and I choose um, symmetrically either the 20 slots that are stars or the five slots that are bars. Yeah, this is the famous Berkeley Campanile. Yeah. So let's say, in general, that we have n bagels, and there are k kinds of bagels. Well, k kinds corresponds to k minus 1 bars. And so the total number of symbols is going to be n, which is the number of bagels, 
plus k minus 1, which is the number of dividers. And the number of ways of choosing the n bagels when there are k kinds is the number of ways of choosing k minus 1 things from a total of n plus k minus 1 slots. And symmetrically, that's the same as choosing n things from a situation where there are n plus k minus 1 slots. And let me just uh, also write that in terms of factorials, if you like. This is n plus k minus 1 factorial divided by the product of two factorials, n factorial and k minus 1 factorial. What happens if we have more flavors then we need bagels, like if you're only buying five bagels and there are 10 flavors. It just means that there will be quite a few bars that are either at the end of the configuration or next to other bars. The same problem occurs in disguise if you ask students the following sort of question. Suppose you have a um, bag of 12 identical lollipops and there are four children and you want to distribute these 12 lollipops to the four children, how many ways can you do that? The answer is that you should take these children and you should give them temporary names. You should call one child onion, one child blueberry, the third child will be called bubblegum, and the fourth child will become caramel. And so you have really exactly the same problem and it has exactly the same answer. One thing to switch to, in this case it's door number three. Are you going to stay with your choice or are you going to make that leap to something different? And very often contestants would stand there agonized, right? So they've got some new information. So stick or switch. Stick or switch.